Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, before I say too much, we'll just give a quick look at the 6480 here now. It's power hair on and we got a new weight block for him as well. Um, the last load of stuff that came from Europe, I got a weight block for it. Well, with the load, so it'll fit any tractor. It's actually an MX weight block, um, but you don't need a top link or anything for it. It, can, it has legs on it. They will sit in under the link arm, the front link arms. It's a right handy job altogether. I think it's about it. I think it's a ton and a quarter actually. Um, I think that's what it is. I'm not sure. There's no indication on it, but I think the guy you bought it off said that it was a ton and uh, a quarter. Anyway, um, I'm leveling off a bit of ground here in front of him. He, he's uh, he's setting it and. The farmer ploughed this himself and uh, also disked it, so it's just getting the rope off the leveller now. And this, he will see the din in the one run of the power arrow and uh, give it a rub of the roller, and the job will be done. So, making a nice job of it now, to be fair. Um, two rubs of the leveller seems to be making it very, very smooth, so be a nice job when it's all finished. There's about 18 odd acres here, maybe a bit with it, so uh, probably won't get it all finished this evening or tonight. But uh, hopefully the weather plays ball with us tomorrow and we can get it finished off. Um, you'll be getting tired of working late every single night. So I mightn't work on too late tonight, depending on the weather forecast. Uh, other than that, I don't know that we go through the MXU in the... Um, in the last video, um, I'll give a bit of a jump out here now and we'll give a walk around her. That's one thing you'll forget the picking shuttle, you have to push him in. There's no neutral in it as such, like forward is forward and it returns to middle and reverse is reverse. But you have to push him in to get neutral. So here he is, uh, our bonnet was destroyed uh, with all the small little marks on it and it was it was uh, wine coloured so I gave the bonnet the paint, I'm just waiting for the case decal to come and I gave it the newer shape decal, the, the Maxim decal, which to be fair, you're not going to find an MXU in the country with the same spec as this one so it more or less is a Maxim, there might be a couple of Maxims with this spec here but um, you'll have a job to find them. Normally the MXUs don't have the Maxim style uh, mud guards, but this one does and uh, the rest now we'll give a look in the cab but uh, some gutsy tractor just shocked us in the mud guard extensions and away we will go <coughs> The one piece door is good for view but you have no hope of closing it unless you have uh, the sunroof open and that is uh, sunroof or back window and that's a bit of a pain it just won't latch properly and any tractor I've driven with a one piece door has always been the same you have to have your aircon working 100% for these yokes with the one piece doors but uh, savage aircon in this so it's not a problem down here we have the same, much the same uh, armrest as a tier 1 and a tier 2 CVX is um, you have a spool here you can oh you change your gears with these lads yeah I was trying to think for a second uh, what they do two of them change your gears bottom fella is automatic gears where your girls from control normally would have been forward and reverse uh, lift and headland management you have a ball of switches along here then as well and you have your high and low box and all electric spools and throttle um, and the rest of it is New Holland you could say um, that's the only styre influence in the whole thing is right there um, what can I say about it other than that uh, one thing that's tricking me with it is on the road uh, I'm inclined to press this fella and think the tractor is going to take off and do a set cruise control speed but it doesn't um, obviously because it's it's not a varial transmission and then 
I'm inclined to hit him at junctions and uh, you know before I come to a junction and then I'm surprised that the tractor isn't starting to slow away way down so there are two things that are just catching me out with it when it's such a similar style to the, the, the CVXs. Um, also, maybe someone knows how I would uh, change those preset revs. Uh, I haven't done the whole pile of fooling around with it, but I just pressed them and nothing automatically made sense of what they were doing. So maybe someone has an explanation on how to change those. So yeah, look, I'm gonna stay uh, leveling away. I'll get this field finished and into the next one. Well, my battery is nearly gone, so I better finish my ramblings on um, for this episode before it goes, because uh, God only knows when I'll, I'll go filming again. But anyway, um, this is kind of a tough one, and um, the viewers here can say say what they like or, or the feedback, um, I suppose always on the channel we kind of talk about things or I give my opinion on things or whatever but uh, pretty open about pretty much everything to be fair uh, is agriculture going to change in this country it's it's hard to know um, I think farming is changing for us uh, a lot of a lot of things we do are changing and that um, couple of, in this area we do a lot of work and uh, a couple of farmers aren't going to winter any cattle uh, this year and obviously that's that's bringing down my workload a bit but that's not the end of the world because it always balances out uh, you know if I don't do as many bales then I'll probably do more or something else or like that's that that's not my my concern uh, my concern is or it's not really my concern I'm just asking you guys because a lot of the viewers are farmers by nature uh, what is your plan for the farm going forward? Uh, a lot of these price increases are, uh, look, they're going to be okay for next year, but are they going to be okay uh, long term? And what's what's your plan to survive them or stay with them or keep going with them? Like I know, I know, milk is up and uh, beef is up and all of that, but you're still taking an awful lot more hits and. Um, everything you lay your hand on is a lot more expensive but i think there's some things are up and unjustifiably up whereas such as land rent like what all the costs associated with everything done haven't necessarily driven land prices you'd imagine demand drives land prices but um i think maybe there might be a bit of a uh, price gouging going on there like you know so things like that uh, that kind of shouldn't go up are going up uh, very very steadily and uh, look an awful lot of contractors don't actually know what to do this year um, through the nature of putting myself out in the public eye or, or whatever you would call it I do get a lot of people in touch with me um, about their own business or what I do or, or my opinion on a certain thing or whatever and a lot of contractors are finding it very very difficult to price their work or stay competitive or what have you so it's uh, it's going to make a tricky year for all of us and I don't think this year is going to be the end of it I think this year is probably most of us will manage away this year all right uh, but it's I think next year is going to hit home even a bit harder um, the deer prices are and going away anytime soon I can't see fuel going back to a normal level unless there's some worldwide worldwide recession that causes a huge drop in demand but uh, that's pretty far away at the same time you would imagine so look it's hard to know uh, it's just a kind of a bit of an open conversation what do lads think of uh, everything that's going on in the world at the moment and uh, where do they see it stopping so i like your feedback and that's um your honest feedback and then see what you think of the whole thing and where it's going to stop and all that kind of stuff so yeah just basically uh, something to chat about there in the comments uh, bar the normal tractor related stuff or whatever 
like I say, from time to time we just speak about different things that are kind of going on in the world and uh, I suppose I say what I think of it and I like to get your feedback on it as well. So look, we're going to stay level in this place. Um, a bond field done and the 6480 isn't far off finishing that field so I'll uh, stay more for it. Get this one blown out. Right, so I'm back here now and we'll have a quick look around the yard because there's a couple of changes. Um, there are two Riedersteins that we're taking off of the 7550. She has two new Riedersteins in the front of her now. Here's our rake. We're going to give a quick look around the rake. Um, you just saw it out the back window the other day. But, what a beauty. Uh, lovely, lovely, lovely rake. I find with the Pottingers you can drive faster than any other rake we've used before. Um, I haven't, I've never used a crow one, but uh, one of the lads that works with us there has used a crow one and he wasn't too gone on it, so I wasn't, I didn't consider a crow one to be honest this time, but uh, I'd be very, very slow to consider anything bar a pottinger. Um, it's that Austrian stuff, all that Austrian stuff is so well made. <laughs> so yeah, pottinger, definitely uh, king of the rakes in my book. Uh, we'll give another bit of a look around here because the Empire has expanded a small bit lately. So we'll give a look at that now. See what's down here. Not a whole pile different. 175 is here. Um, with a blown front tyre. So that needs a bit of attention. Monday morning we'll whip that tyre off and put on a different tyre. <clears throat> there she is, sitting pretty. I have my front PTO working again. I don't know whether I filled you in on all of that. Basically, uh, the front PTO unit was spinning, but the tractor wasn't reading the speed correctly. The speed was all over the place. So we took out the front PTO unit. Uh, there was a couple of seals iffy in it and um, changed him. Took out, there was a big copper washer on the speed sensor. And I think that was what was causing the error. So I took that out, squeezed it up. And she's working perfectly now. So that's that PTO unit done. All there is else really to them from PTOs is that's all night inside there. There's kind of nothing else to go wrong in them. That's the factory fit of PTO. If her 7550 was here, I would show you, but it's not. Uh, she has a Zudberg PTO. So slight differences. Uh, this one takes an oil feed from the transmission, obviously, to say the solenoid is back there. But the Zudberg has its own oil feed, or it's, its own oil. It's all self-contained. Obviously the tankers are there, the class rake is there, ready to go when it's needed. Um, and now we are breaking into new ground down here, this is all uh, new to us, it's where we've expanded into. We were very very fortunate to be able to do this, um, and we have plans here for the future, so uh, yeah, watch this space. But, um, Basically, we've a lot more room now, and we are getting very, very tight in room there, so uh, this is all more than welcome. Um, plenty of room for parking here now. We'll be all the way down along here eventually, and it'll be a case of you can pick anything up without anything else being in the way, and you can still drive all the way down to pick another item up. So, there's some stuff missing, but uh, the two of these aren't mine either. I had these uh, borrowed, and this was uh, one of last year's purchases and has been a success uh, so far needed a good bit of work um, some beardings and a bit of rebuilding uh, uh, one side of it here was damaged it was all damaged along here but we uh, we replaced it and uh, lovely job now but they're actually a deadly spreader because look all this stuff that you find in every bit of dung you go spreading it all just comes out here. It doesn't get wrapped around beaters or wrapped around rotors or anything. It all comes straight out. So, in my opinion, that's a contractor's dunk spreader uh, because it'll handle everything and you're going to come across everything on the road. Uh, dumper is my kind of thing. Of that. This, um, what we've done with this is it was all overgrown and rushes and everything. You've probably seen it in some of the previous videos. So, we mulched it off and then applied it. And then a power harrow it and uh, just left it like that so we're starting to green up now again all our rubbish is starting to grow here and what we're going to do with this is burn it off i actually have burned it off but it, it 
doesn't have seem to work. I just came back there one evening with Roundup and I said I'd burn all this off. And that's about a week ago now and it hasn't actually done a thing to it. So next day I have to spray around, do it around up again, burn it off, kill off all the old rubbish that's coming. Once all that's dead, give it an old tilling and uh, set a bit of grass seed in it. And that's what we'll be doing with it for the time being. Down at the bottom here, then we have a bit more room to turn around and I have the triples taken off here for the time being. Uh, they're home out of their winter hibernation. And like you see, also passenger machines and absolutely love them as well. Bar, they're transport height. That's one of the things I hate about them. Best float, best cut, but transport height is a small issue with them. And that is pretty much it. Uh, I think I have the whole scope covered there now and everything included in it. So there's our mowers. Plenty of room to come down here now, swing around the machine, plenty of room to expand and uh, do whatever I want in the future here. Well, you can't do whatever you want in life, unfortunately, but uh, you get the gist of what I'm saying. Maybe in the future, build, build here or put up a workshop here or something. You'd never know. So we'll try and do what we can do so yeah um that's it for me for this week thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next week